In this video, I want to talk all about the Husqvarna auto mower system that I bought so that I can sit back, relax, and have the robot mowers cut my lawn all by themselves. Is that really how it works? I'll show you the setup process and more up next. Hey everyone, my name is Jeff and on this channel I do all sorts of tech review, tip videos, as well as do-it-yourself projects. And for the last several weeks, I've been working on a do-it-yourself project. I purchased an auto mower system to see if it'll cut the grass for me. In fact, I actually purchased two auto mower systems uh, or two auto mowers for the uh, size of the yard that we have. So I'm going to go through uh, the unboxing, what comes with them, talk about why I chose those, show you some testing of what they actually look like, explain how they work, and, and then at the end of this video, I'll let you know my initial thoughts on using these mowers and my experience so far. So first off, I want to let you know this is not a sponsored video. This is, uh, these mowers that I bought were something I bought with my own money as kind of my own experiment here to see if I can automate cutting my lawn so that I can just sit back, relax, and kind of eliminate some of the work that I have to do, free up some of my time so I can spend more of it doing things like making some of these videos. And I wanna let you know that everything I'm talking about in this video, you can find links to down in the video description. So if you wanna find out more information for yourself, if this sounds like something you might be interested in doing yourself, you can check out all that information as well. So let's see what comes included with the uh, Husqvarna Automore. This is the 115H. So we have two bags of lawn stakes. So there's some wire here. My guess is this is either boundary wire or guide wire and then some connection pieces. We'll take a closer look at this coming up. Oh, we're gonna lift this guy out. Underneath the mower, looks to be two spools of black 250 meters of boundary wire. So we've got a quick guide and looks to be an operator's manual. A lot more yard stakes. This is in addition to the other two bags. So a total of eight bags of uh, yard stakes. We've got our power supply. This looks to be part of the charging station. And here is the rest of the charging station. That is everything. Kind of take a look at all sides of this. So let's take a look at the bottom. Uh, we've got our two main wheels that are attached to the motor and these kind of have little rubber spikes on them to help dig into the grass. Uh, we've got our cutting wheel that's going to spin as that's spinning. These are the blades that are going to fly out and then that's going to cut the grass. We also have these two wheels which completely rotate all the way around. And those are gonna be right on this side. Now looking at the rest of the underbody, there's nothing else to it in this aspect. Everything else seems to be accessed from the top. So looking at the top of the unit, it's got a big stop button, the uh, logo, and then this door opens up. We've got the uh, cutting height that we can adjust. And then this is gonna be our whole electronic area uh, it says here we're going to enter in a pin code and we'll go through more of that and then there appears to be the power button right up in this top corner okay i am curious to see how much this thing weighs we are right at 20 20.8 20 pounds so just under 21 pounds Let's see if we can open up the power supply one end goes into an outlet and the other end is going to go into the charging station here's the stats on the uh, power supply so on my smartphone, I went to the Google Play Store and uh, I found the uh, Husqvarna Connect app. That's what I searched for. And there is the Auto Mower Connect. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. This will work for the for Apple products for the uh, App Store. I'm going to go ahead and install. And since I don't have an account yet, I'm going to go ahead and sign up. So once I had uh, put in my email address, it actually sent me a verification email 
to verify my identity and once I did that I was able to continue in the app and now from this point I can get started by adding my auto mower. So from this point I've done a couple of things. One is I was able to take this top charging piece, I just popped it into the uh, charging pad or the station and then there was the plug that I have plugged in so that I've got some power to the power station. Um, down below in the center is a little flashing blue light which is telling me that I've got some sort of power going to this. Uh, in addition to that in the quick start guide that came with the mower it recommends you cut your grass before laying everything out so I've gone ahead and done that. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to let the mower charge up. So on the side of the unit that is closest to the uh, stop button, this is where it's going to go into the charging station. And uh, there's little metal contacts on here. I'm going to just match these up with the port that's on the station. And if I lift the cover, I can see on the readout here, now it's asking me to enter my PIN code so I'm just going to let the unit charge up so that it's got a full battery. And real quick, as we do in all the videos on this channel, we've hidden Tinker. Tinker is our little hidden robot, and he briefly pops up in all the videos on this channel, including this video. If you happen to spot Tinker, our hidden robot, popping up somewhere, be the first person to let me know the timestamp. That's the amount of time into this video that you spotted Tinker popping up. He looks just like this guy right on my shirt. And uh, if you're that first person, I'll put your name on our Tinker Forward Hall of Fame page as well as give you a shout out in one of my future videos. Ultimately, I decided on the Husqvarna 115H auto mowers. And those are probably the most budget friendly or lowest costing auto mowers that Husqvarna makes. Now, in doing a quick Google search, uh, you can actually see a riding mower very similar to the one that I'm using right now if you were to go and purchase that at one of your hardware stores is going to be priced somewhere right around $1950 as of the recording of this video. These 115H auto mowers that I purchased you can buy the bare bones with Bluetooth uh, connectivity models for $1200 each. I actually opted to go just a little bit more expensive and get the 4G cellular connectivity. So with the 115Hs, with the 4G capability, those were priced at $1,400 each. Um, I could have also gone the route of getting a larger Husqvarna uh, auto mower model that was the 430. I guess the difference is um, for like the 430, now that gets even pricier, that is $2,500. Um, but I would have only needed one of those to cut my lawn. The larger of an auto mower you buy, the larger acreage it's going to cover. So um, I had to make a decision. I have roughly 0.8 acres of land. I could have bought that larger auto mower and that would have gotten it done. I bought the two smaller mowers. actually wound up paying just a little bit more than that larger mower. But uh, my mind and my thinking about this is that if one of those mowers happens to go down, needs maintenance, something like that, if I only have the one auto mower that's running, um, now I'm out a complete mowing system. Having two mowers, even though they're kind of smaller, um, I've still got one as a backup in case something happens to the other one. I always have that mindset of wanting to have some sort of a backup. So let's talk about how the auto mower works. Each one of the auto mowers that I have has its own half of the yard that it's responsible for. I've drawn up this diagram. You can see our house and our garage. Here's our driveway. Uh, essentially what I did is I split the yard in half. So uh, auto mower number one that's over here, which we've conveniently named Sparky, cuts this half of the yard. And then auto mower number two, which is named Blaze, uh, we have uh, cutting this half of our yard. And you'll kind of see areas here where I have trees, we have a garden, we even have a fire pit. So there were a lot of challenges in laying out the boundary wire, which is this green line that goes all the way around each side of my yard. And this boundary wire is what keeps the auto mower in the yard. Um, essentially what it does is when it's fully charged up, it's going to head out and then it's going to go start cutting the lawn. And when it cuts the lawn, it runs in a random pattern. 
uh, and it will never leave this boundary wire as long as it is fully connected, creating a complete loop, and that's how the automower knows what boundaries to stay into. Now the automower is smart enough so that when its battery is getting low, it uh, needs to find its way back home so it doesn't just get stuck somewhere in the middle of the lawn with a dead battery because it didn't make it back to the charger. Uh, one of the ways it can do that is it can follow the boundary line back to the charger. The other thing is these blue lines that I've got drawn, these are guide wires and there's essentially three different wires that plug into the back of the chargers, the left and right uh, boundary wire and then coming out of the center of the charging station is this guide wire and the automowers will essentially run over that guide wire when they need to get back home and then that will take them back to the charger. The other thing is they can use those guide wires to follow out and then you can specify different areas you might want cut in your yard. Um, it will follow the guide wire maybe all the way to the back of your yard and then start cutting or you can specify that it's just going to follow the guide wire for a short distance and then go start cutting in that area. So with our yard being 38,000 square feet or 0.87 acres, with each half of our yard being 19,000 square feet, each mower can do roughly 721 square feet per hour. So it's gonna take each one of my mowers about 26 and a half hours to fully cut each half of my lawn. So at the charging station are four of these ground screws and I just have screwed them in. I'm screwing this last one in here. And that holds my charging plate to the ground. So here's the boundary wire that I've laid and when it came it was in these spools. This is about what I have left. Not much to the wire at all. This is probably going to be the same wire that would be used for an invisible fence. Uh, and then these are the stakes that are holding it down. Uh, I actually just took these stakes and because they include all those bags of them, you just push this down into the ground and then over the course of the next couple of weeks, this wire just naturally starts to sink down into the ground, which is what's happened with Sparky on the other side of our yard. So bearing the boundary wire, probably the most time consuming part of the install. If you've got something like an edger, I've got an Ego multi-tool system with an edger head that I've also done a review on on this channel. That works extremely well to dig a trench if you're burying any of that boundary wire. I'd also recommend you get yourself some good knee pads, some gloves, maybe a gardening tool or two, and that'll all help you with uh, burying that boundary wire. And if you do need to pull up any of those plastic stakes, a pair of pliers works perfect for uh, removing or tweaking those stakes as you're placing the boundary wire. A lot of the time that it took me when I was laying out the boundary wire, I would stake it down and then I would run the mower in test phases in those areas, like around our fire pit. And this is a tricky area because of the gravel. And if I put the boundary wire too close to that landscape brick, it would cross over the brick and actually get stuck in the gravel. So then I'd have to go back and I'd have to move the boundary wire back about an inch or two and then continue testing with the mower. These are all things that took more time in initially laying out the mower, now I've got it down where it'll come right up to the landscape rock and it won't get stuck in the gravel. So I wanna show you an example of the boundary wire coming down our driveway. It's actually running right along this edge here and then right here, the boundary wire branches out and actually goes around this tree. So I ran it to the tree, looped it around, and then brought it back. And then the wire is running right next to itself back to the driveway and then continuing down the driveway. When you run the two pieces of wire right next to themselves, essentially it cancels the boundary signal out. And then when the mower is zooming around on our front yard, it knows that this is an island that it should not bump into but it will pass right over this part of the boundary wire because it just thinks that this is another open area. So after running the wire, I've connected up both the left and the right ports with the wire. And you'll notice that there's this little plastic piece that uh, I'm just plugging into the back of the charging station. There's three ports, there's one for the left side of the wire, one for the right side of the wire, and then a middle one for the guide wire which I have here. 
I've run that and I ran it uh, down underneath the charging station and then out. I still need to put a coupler on this wire and it's pretty self uh, explanatory, pretty easy. Essentially, you're just gonna put the wire into this piece and then go ahead and close it up over around the wire. So with some needle nose pliers, I'm just pushing down to close the plastic coupler around the wire. And now on the end here, this is where I can plug this into the actual charging station. And now I've got my wires plugged in. This is where that low voltage cable is gonna go. So this is that coil of wire that came in the box. This is the low voltage cable. One end of this is going into the power supply and the other end I'm just plugging right into uh, the charging station. And then it states in the instructions, you should not keep the excess cable of the low voltage cable coiled. So I'm just gonna stretch this out and lead that back to the power station. So these two cable ends are where one spool ran out and then I started the next spool and then the uh, kit comes with these couplers. So this little coupler is what I'm gonna use. I'm just gonna insert one wire into one of these holes, one wire into the other hole, and then I'm gonna use pliers to just clamp down on this uh, blue piece. If I was connecting my guide wire, which I'm gonna be doing here, then I would put that into the center one. And then that's all you need to do to couple the wires together. So with everything connected up, I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. And if I get a green light, that means the loop is good and we can uh, start mowing. Let's see if we get a green light. Here's open, here's open. Woohoo! green light. That is awesome. So let's take a look under the hood. So it says here, press stop to operate mower. It won't let you do anything until you hit that stop button. So uh, just as a safety. So from here, we've got our different menu options, schedule, settings, and accessories. Um, and as far as schedule, you can go into this on this panel. I find that it's easier to do this on my phone, but you can schedule what days, what times. Uh, you can also set a wizard so that it learns when it should cut. Um, let's go back here to settings. This is an area where you can set the security. You can set the lawn coverage. Again, you can do the lawn coverage in the app, which I just find to be a little bit easier. Um, let's jump over to security because I know this was one of the things I was interested in. Uh, it has you set up a pin and so I'm going to go ahead and enter that pin. So with the pin entered, I can choose the security level that I want to set the mower on. And if I'm doing a lot of maintenance, if I am moving the wire around, starting stopping this thing a lot, when I go into security level, I'll usually set it to low. Um, it also has medium and high. High is going to give you that alarm where if the, uh, the mower senses that somebody's hit the stop button or if it's picked up, they essentially have 10 seconds to enter that pin code and if they don't enter it, it is going to sound the alarm. And then here's an example of what it's going to sound like when the alarm goes off. So there you go, not the loudest thing in the world, but definitely enough of a sound to draw attention. So under uh, installation, if we go to that, you can set up things like your starting point, uh, drive past wire. So right now it is set where you can see here it's 13 inches, but like that's how far the mower is actually gonna cross over the wire uh, and then decide that it's going to stop and then back up. So around my boundaries, um, I can change that distance if I didn't want that. That's what it was set for for default, so I'm gonna leave that right now. Eco mode, so eco mode's kinda cool. Essentially, you can turn that on or off, and this is going to stop powering your boundary wire when the, uh, the mower heads to the charging station and it's just sitting here charging up. So that's kind of a nice feature. Uh, to have to save a little bit of power. And then there are two different ways to connect your phone to these auto mowers. There's the connect at home and under the installation, if you go into this connect at home, this pairing is actually gonna be just for the Bluetooth connection. So what we found is you can uh, have the Bluetooth connection, which is the uh, lower end model, if you don't pay extra for the uh, 4G connectivity. Now I actually paid extra so that we could get the 4G connectivity. Um, when you're just using the Bluetooth, you can only control uh, you can only use your phone to control the uh, robot mower when you are within Bluetooth range. And in testing this, even when this 
uh, mower goes to the very back of our yard. If I'm in my house or in the front yard, I lose connectivity from my phone because it only uses the range that Bluetooth can handle. That is one of the reasons why I wanted to get the uh, uh, extra 4G capability. Then you are connected using your phone and we don't even need to be at the house. We can be out and about and still see the status of the mower or tell it to do things like park or start up even if we are not at home. So Blaze is right there. Sparky is running over there. As I was mentioning when I was showing you the diagram of our backyard, so heading right down the center towards our fire pit, I actually dug a trench and you can very uh, slightly see it. We actually have one boundary wire from Sparky running right on top of uh, one boundary wire for Blaze and it's not canceling each other out. Each mower is got its own loop and it's connected. So it's just treating it as its own boundary wire. So the mowers never cross paths. They're both gonna stop at that middle line. So here we have Sparky and he's by our swing set. Um, the swing set is actually an area where I didn't put boundary wire around. So you can see there, he just is gonna bump into an object such as the post of the swing set and then he just turns and finds another area to go. Same thing, like if I happen to be close to the mower and it were to run into me, um, it's just going to stop. So if you do have, you know, kids playing or something, it comes right up to my foot, it's gonna stop, and then it'll go ahead and turn directions and then continue going in a different direction until it bumps into the next thing and decides to keep turning and moving around. So the auto mower will do up to a 30 degree incline as far as hills. It doesn't like little dips, little ditches, little divots in your yard. So this was a low spot and so far I've just filled it in with a little bit of dirt. Uh, Sparky, or actually Blaze I should say, was getting stuck in this low spot. By putting the dirt there, that allowed him to continue running. Now I'll need to plant some grass seed there so in case you're wondering, the sound you're hearing, that is how much noise the auto mower makes. It's just the blades that are spinning and uh, that's what's making the noise. There's no gas powered mower from a traditional lawn mower that you're typically hearing. So really the only noise you get is just a little bit of that cutting noise from those blades. So Sparky's coming back from mowing and he's going to charge up. So he has followed the guide wire that I laid back to the charging station. Um, he's smart enough to back himself into the charging station so that he can plug himself back in. Let's see how well he does with the connection here. And now he has plugged himself back in. He's going to continue charging until he's fully recharged and then he automatically will send himself out again unless he's being told to stay parked. The mower will not run if there, if it doesn't sense there's a complete loop. If there's a break anywhere in this wire, the mower tells you it's not a complete loop and it will not run. So that's frustrating if you accidentally cut into the wire somewhere or if something happens to break the connection, which is what happened to me. I've run 1300 uh, feet of wire on you know going around my half of the yard double that if you count both halves and uh, I wanted to find what you know where the break was when that happened um, that that could be very frustrating for you um, I actually found a tool that helps with finding wires and breaks in wires that are underground that I'm going to be doing a future video on be sure to hit the subscribe button that video should be coming out shortly here to help show you how to find a break in underground wire, even if it's like invisible fence wire or something like that, something I would recommend that you may wanna pick up a couple of extra couplers just in case you happen to get a couple of line breaks, you've got some on hand. I'll leave a link down below to where you can pick up more of those. And it does take me a while to make these videos, so if you're enjoying this or if you're finding this video helpful, take a second, smash that like button, I appreciate it. So this side of our yard has been cut now for a couple of weeks and as the cables that I have staked down continue to sink into the ground you can keep lowering the blade on your auto mower. Uh, so I've lowered it a couple of times. It's now on a level five, started on a level eight 
and you can see this side of our lawn is much more evenly cut. So let's talk about connecting the mower up to my phone. I went ahead and downloaded the Auto Mower Connect, and then when opening that, it says add your auto mower. On the mower itself, if I go to accessories, I see here information and I can scroll down to Auto Mower Connect. I'll go ahead and enter my pin. And with my pin entered, I can now check mark Auto Mower Connect. Now this is not the Bluetooth one, this is the 4G one and it has terms of use. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to agree to that and then I'm gonna go to pairing. If I click on pairing, I can do a new pairing and this is gonna generate a pin code that I have 10 minutes to also sync up by adding to my phone. So it's now generated that pin code and here I can go to add auto mower. It's gonna show me my options. I actually have the 115 and I have the 115 with the connect module. So I'm gonna tap on that and then Basically, it tells you to do just what I did, and here's where I can enter my pairing code. So this pairing code is unique to your device and changes every time you try to pair it up. When I go to next, this is going to pair my account, and then I have the opportunity to name my mower. And once it is named, we're gonna call him Sparky, uh, I now can see the status of the mower. At this point, it is stopped because I'm working with the control panel. So now that I've got the mower linked to my phone, I have options here such as map, and I can actually see a map of where it has roamed around on our house. So if I click on more, that actually takes me to this area where I have more control. I can go into things like settings, installation, and then I can do things like lawn coverage. And this is where I can specify like an area one, um, I can have it use the guide wire and tell it distance from the charging station, so in this case 19 meters, and then I can tell it how often do I want it to cut area one, let's say like 30%. Uh, I can set area two much further down that guide wire, so like 100 meters, that's gonna be my backyard. Let's tell it to cut that like almost 70% of the time. And then I can actually do a third area if I want, and I can control all these different coverages, watch the mower, do its cutting and see if I need to make adjustments. When I've made any adjustments that I'm making, I can then go up here and hit save. So I can also go under settings to the schedule, and this is where right now I just have a cut, you know, set to cut six to nine every single day. I can actually go up here to edit, and then right now it's six to nine on like Monday, Tuesday. If I wanted to turn those days off, I could. You can adjust those hours as you want and uh, set up the schedule that you feel best. When you've got it all set, you can go to save. So what I recommend an auto mower for you this is something that initially I, I would say that I am impressed with them. Um, I know that my wife, who also watches the mowers running around, um, can't get over the fact that it just runs on random all over the place. Comparing it to a robot vacuum, which we also have, where that robot will consistently go back and forth on our carpeting in straight lines, that is completely different to how the Husqvarna auto mower works where it just randomly bounces all over your yard and until it gets the grass down to a level that is pretty much the same it really makes you wonder like who cut the grass in such a weird wacky way because you just have all these random paths going in all sorts of weird directions. So far I think we're off to a good start. I've got both the mowers running. They're running consistently and I think they're doing a great job in keeping the lawn cut. Now, I still have to go around and I have to trim around the edges uh, for some of the landscaping but I will say not having to spend about the hour hour and a half that it typically takes me to cut the entire lawn before even having to go around and trim over the last couple of weeks has already been a time saver now will it be a time saver down the road knowing the investment of time I've already put into these robots that's going to be something that I will be reporting back to you on in future weeks. So we'll see. I plan on doing more tip videos, more informational videos, as well as future reviews. And so you don't miss any of my future videos about these automores, as well as some of the other cool technology that I have uh, done review videos on, including my solar power station, which sneak peek, I'm going to try and get that working with my automowers so that I can charge them up and run them completely off the grid 
I'm going to be doing a future video on that to see if I can get that working for you. That's going to be coming out soon. Hit the subscribe button notification bell so you don't miss any of those videos. In the meantime, you can check out that solar charging station as well as the Ego battery system that it uses linked down in this video description below. My name is Jeff. As always, I appreciate you watching. Be sure to make every day awesome, and I will see you in the next video.